Hey, good evening. Happy Sunday to every one of you. Let me let me increase this volume. Happy, happy Sunday to every one of you. It's your regular host again, Edith ID. I am here live today. <laughs> Last week, see, my family, my viewers missed me a lot. I wasn't here, I was away. But today, I am here. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Okay, it's your regular host again on African Pesetas every 8 p.m. Sunday evening, every 8 p.m. Nigerian time. Please don't miss the time again. Okay, we bring you this show uh, live stream on three platforms at the same time. We air on um, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. So make sure you log in into one of them, okay? This show is powered by the GCSDN, Global Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria. Uh -uh. Today we'll be talking about, um, we have a very nice topic. I have somebody in the back studio today and we are going to talk about her. I brought a guest, mm -hmm, guest. So she, it's, her name is Felt Hilson Yasa. She's an amputee from the middle belt in Nigeria. She's currently making waves, making impact on other people's lives. See, let's keep telling our stories. You remember the line now, you and I. <laughs> let's keep telling our stories because it's real when we talk our stories by ourselves. We, we, you know, the emotions are there, Maggie, Pepe, and all the onions we add to it. So let, let's keep telling our stories. So before we move on, I will want you to um, bring in more people to the fold. Invite your friends, share this uh, broadcast, invite people to come onto the fold. So let's all be part of this very, very exciting show. So I'm going to go on a quick break, and I'll be back shortly. Country people, eh? country people. Eh? How many letters are called on? Continue. Will they do the same thing? I will they expect different results? Not be to do be that. Mm -hmm. If you don't reach 18 years, you never do your PVC. Or you don't do your PVC, you never go collect them. Now you be the problem we will face for this country. Now you. Mm -hmm. Go in neck office. May you see people PVC food them, me, me, me. Una no go collect them. Una go go to for corner. They say, eh, eh, I would like to vote, uh, but my vote no go count. How your vote all take count? Where you no go vote? Do I know? Vote not they count. Now politicians they bribe to buy vote. This time around, our vote must count. Okay. You know why? Because the INEC of before, not with the INEC of now. Because they don't tell to hear the youth are the leaders of tomorrow. Why the old one not agree come out? <laughs> and I will not register. They will have a register. You're too far. I'm not going to that place on election day. My dear, go any INEC office. Go do change of venue. They go carry your pulling unit. Call your area. It's not even your domain. Just telling me the truth. So, not let anything disenfranchise you. Because the strength of the oppressor lies in the display of the people's abysmal ignorance. Sir, don't make me speak English now. Sorry, yo, sorry. Our mood don't do. I believe and I stand for a better Nigeria. Hello, we not get money. Now, body it the work for marriage or for burial. As for me, I don't enter house. Nothing there outside. Oh. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna talk about that later. You you heard that guy? Very very on point. Faith, yes. I welcome back to um. Uh, the show African Pesetas, like I said before we went on the break, I'm going to bring in a guest today. She's at the back studio. So her name is Faith Yasa Hisin. She is originally from the Middle Belt, Benue State, Nigeria. She's 28 years old, an amputee, a tailor, a disability advocate, a human rights activist, a humanitarian, and a peace building advocate. She is a graduate of uh, Plateau State Polytechnic and holder of the HND Higher National Diploma and um, OND together. So she has uh, HND in accounting. She's the executive director and founder of Strength in Disabilities Initiative in Nigeria. Motivated to change the realities faced by underprivileged people with disabilities and internally displaced people living in camps in Nigeria. Faith goes around and make clothes for these people. Remember I told you she's a tailor, right? Also a tailor with all those attributes. Okay. So she made clothes for these people with her one hand. She's endearing to everyone that comes across her because of her kind heart. She's also a human rights activist who fights for justice for her people. She's a total strength in disability. Her condition has never stopped her from uh, higher 
achievement. Faith is everything. Okay, I'm going to bring her quick soon. Let me just see if I have any comments because I um, today I'll be reading your comments as we go along. Thank you, Juliet. Good evening, mommy, and happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday. I'm glad to see you again live, right? Uh, oh, oh, that's my hussy. Allah, the gel messy. My kisses. Ah, I love you. I love you. I love you. Any new one? Okay, great job, my wife. Thank you so much, Hazi. I love you too. <laughs> okay, I am now going to bring in Faith into the studio. Please welcome Faith Hilsing Yasa into the studio. Please so introduce Thank yourself you. to my audience. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome. I'm glad to see you. I'm happy to be here too. Mm. Me too. I'm happy to see you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, you are one of us. You're one of our comrades at the GCSDN, uh, Global Coalition for Security and Democracy in Nigeria. I found it an honor to bring you here because of what you do. The first day I heard about your story, I was just astonished. And I'm like, oh. This girl is going beyond her reach. I want to bring her to my show because I bring good people here, right? So I have some yeah. questions for you. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'm doing well. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. So what happened to your hand? We can see that you are an amputee. I want you to show my audience your hands. What happened? <laughs> okay, so... Um, can you raise my, it? Yeah, okay. this, this is my okay. tomb. Okay. Looks like my baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was I was six years when mm -hmm. I played football. I hope you won't get emotional because I don't like being a hey, yeah. I'll it's try. Normal I'll try play. because we need to know the real <laughs> fact from see when the horse's mouth is, is um is present with me, like when you are there to talk about your story, I appreciate oh. it a lot. Yes, even if I get exactly. here. Oh, I don't get no, it's an old story. I we have more I'll try, I'll try. I want to I will do a dunga. Don't worry. I'll try. I'll right. try. It's okay. So I was six years when I played ball in school, in my primary school. So I fell down. To call the story short, I was taken to a Harvard uh, treatment, a native treatment, where they tied the hand. This was where it happened. We have my bangles here. They oh, had the cut wrist. Off. The yeah. wrist. So, okay. Yeah. So I, when the hand got dislocated, they now took me to a Harvard place. The people now mismanaged the hand because there was internal injury, which the local treat, uh, local uh, person that was treating my hand didn't take an X-ray to ascertain no, whether they, they don't. The yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. To ascertain whether the fracture has injury, mm -hmm. so. He tied the hand all together with a wound. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is that the hand got rotten. So at the time, I would be taken to the popular orthopedic hospital here in Benue called Muka. The hand has already spoiled. My skin was, was rotten. My meat was rotten. So the doctor asked me to blink my hand. I cannot. So she, he, she told my parent that, this there was no speculation anymore. There was no hope except we cut it off. So that was how my hand got amputated. Yeah. See, it was very, very mismanaged. I'm so sorry to hear serious. that. Yeah, no problem. No mm -hmm. problem. But yeah. you are a strong woman. Despite yeah. the fact that you, you present with this, you are a very strong woman. So I have some other questions for you, my dear. How do you find strength to do your humanitarian work for people? I'm wondering how you make this close and go around doing good with one hand. Is okay, this so stressful? How do it's you do not, it? It gives me joy doing it. One of, the, one of the things I found joy doing is when I touch lives. When I touch people that have passed almost the same level of discrimination and stigma I passed through. Because after I left hospital, I returned back home. That was when I started facing the reality of life. 
my peers start getting away from me. The, my mates in school started avoiding me. Avoiding me alone was another thing. Discrimination against me was the bigger one. They don't want to associate with me alone was just something I can manage. But at the same time, they were insulting me. One hand, you see me, I go to school, seven o'clock. I fight from school from seven o'clock from then till two. The school will close and I go home. Subsequently, when I started growing up, I said, no, I cannot continue like this. For how long can I continue fighting back at people that are insulting me? There should be strength in this, my disability that I've acquired. And that is one of the things that disability, I founded an organization called Strength in Disability. So when you insult me, it pains me deep down my heart, but I hold very strong for not to fight back. And I told myself I was going to fight back in another way. For me to be passing through this, it means so many other persons with disability are passing through the same. Exactly. So what I'm going to do here is this. I am going to be a big voice for those that cannot speak for themselves. But this time around, I'm going to take it to another dimension. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look out for a platform where my voice can be heard. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look out for a platform where I can advocate for those that cannot talk for themselves. I'm going to look out for a platform where I can fight for policies that speaks well for persons with disabilities. I, I, you see, when you see people saying, well, are you the only person with disability? Why are you begging? And when I, I, I found myself in such situation, I heard people talking about that. I make a correction. I don't keep quiet and go. Good. Let's say, for example, I was somebody who was a hairdresser, right? Can I make the hair now? No, no. it's impossible. You need two hands to make hair. Good. Now, let's assume I want to diversify into the another thing, the tailoring. I'm a tailor. Yes, yes, you when told I, me. When I yes. go to learn, was my mentor ready to teach me these are the questions we ask before we discriminate against persons with disability. That blind woman you are seeing there, now maybe she was frying a granite to survive. Now that she has become blind, can she, how many people are ready to help her to fry that granite? And some people feel that disability is congenital. They can, they can, it, it can, they can contact you if they come close. They can contact disability if they come close to you. Yeah, it's not contagious. They don't no. want to. They don't want to patronize you. They don't want to patronize you because they don't want you to touch your disability with what they want to use. Yeah, I'm still doing the same thing in my tailoring business. Oh wow! Right, and so I tap the strain because I asked myself, how long can you continue fighting a physical fight? I am going to take it to another dimension. That was when I started advocating for persons with disability. I have launched protests for persons with disability in this venue over time. We are uh, something that originally is for persons with disability. Some percentage you are giving out job. Percentage, 5% are supposed to be given to persons with disability has stipulated in the Disability Act 2018. Mm -hmm. You hold it onto yourself, and then when we go asking you, you give us three names out of 15 names you are supposed to give, and out of the three names, you, you finally hijacked it. We went there and I asked him, Sir, what I don't want to mention them for now, but I'm just telling you at instances we have fight for the right of persons with disability. Thank we you. talked to some person, we passed through a, a consultation process, and it was not coming out positively. They keep dribbling us from here to there. The last one he said, he said, hope on God. I told him, sir, this is something you are supposed to do. You are telling us to hope on God. God the next day, I, I blocked the office. <laughs> that is my comrade in power. <laughs> yes, here. Of course, I have been arrested over time for fighting for the right. Yeah, so I've been arrested over time. I was arrested in the October 12th. 2020 October uh, 1st protest. I was also arrested in June 12th uh, uh, protest in 2021. So I've been arrested. They have been arresting me in overtime, but I don't care. As soon as you arrest me, you check me, you found me no guilty. Rather, it's my mouth. It's revolution without ammunition. 
<laughs> so over the years, that is how I've been able to tap my strength. Back in my in my my polytechnic, in the polytechnic where I school, I face a lot, right? My mates, they don't want to associate with me. But the only thing that was so good at maths. So yeah, you can tell. Because, yeah. because they want to gain something from me. At the end of the exam, they want to write, put something on their paper. So they mm -hmm. associate with me because I'm giving them a tutorial hey. on the math subject. So that was just what used to happen. So that mm -hmm. is how I've been able to tap my strength over the years. A round of applause. So you've yeah. answered this question, um, you've dived into it a little, but I will still ask you for the sake of my audience, why okay. did you decide to go into politics? Because I see that you've, you've uh, wandered into this question already. Why did okay. you, why? you're actively um, a politician right now. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I've said this, uh, I've thought some of it in my, <laughs> my last uh, question and so i know what have you gone into, into it yeah so I, I i said something like when i said this time around i'm going to take it to another dimension that is the point a platform where your voice can be heard a platform that is just what i am looking for because advocating protesting going around i feel it may not sometimes go as fast as I want. But if I'm in a, if I'm a decision maker, if I'm in a state assembly, there are positions I need to hold in this country to make things go right. And that is why I move from one stage to another. I move from fighting a physical fight in my school to taking it to another level of advocacy. From advocacy, I need to be a decision maker. I need to be on that table they are making decisions so that my voice can be heard at the early stage. I told them something. Um, we went to a program in Abuja, and the youth parliament uh, chairman came on stage. She called persons with disability all sorts of names. He doesn't see us like people with disability. And very fortunate for me, I was in the front. And they say, you have a question, I raised my hand. I said, sir. It was a young boy that I may be older than him. I said, sir, in the youth parliament, how many young persons with disability are represented? Are mm -hmm. representing them? Because when you are not on the decision making table, reverse is the case. Oh, exactly. Reverse is the case. But if you are there, they put down this one and say, no, these persons with disability are lacking here. This is how it's supposed it's ought to be for it to go well with persons with disability to mm -hmm. avoid um disenfranchisement so that this person cannot be coming later because it's always that because we come later that's why we're always protesting shouting but if we are there on that table when the decision is taken we will say no and i feel that i am not somebody who will always hide my mouth behind or go take some bribe to shut up over issues Mm -mm. And that is why I want to be in assembly. That is why I want to be in these policies where decisions are made. Me being in assembly is like the dream of persons with disability comes true. Mm -hmm. Because it, once it's not going way, going the way it should, I'm not somebody that will keep quiet. I know. Right? You. I will never keep quiet. And I will make sure I shout and shout until that is done. And that is why just like moving from another stage of advocacy to another. And this time around, I told you, I want to be a decision maker. And that's why I go into politics. A bigger <laughs> round of applause to you. Yeah. Yes, because yeah. you are a voice to the voiceless. Yeah. Others can yeah. speak. So you're going to speak for them. Especially, there is no room for disability in our country. They haven't, the no. government haven't provided anything for people no. living with disabilities. So it's really, you know, like pushing you guys to the edge. And I'm so happy you're speaking up. Thank you. Yeah. Because this is a good thing. You went into politics and you want to make the first-hand decision for the people. Yeah. Thank you, Faith. Thank you, thank okay. you. One last question. Okay. What are your wishes yeah. for your constituency or oh. your community, I'll say? There are so many. You know, I you earlier, introduced, you earlier introduced that I was one of you here and Yes, I always know your budget uh, programs. Uh -huh. 
And in, I think, about my third edition, I talked about constituency rights. Mm -hmm. I talked about um, constituency budgets. You know, it's as if it doesn't exist, but it exists. This is a situation where I will make my constituency know that actually there is dividends of this constituency. The people that have been sending to the House of Assembly, they are owing them. And if possible, go and ask them for what they are owing you. Mm -hmm. The project they are supposed to execute in the constituency for the benefit of the entire constituency, my sister, they corner them, then they go chop them. Then go they pretend like so nothing they happen. You understand? Mm -hmm. Nothing they happen. This are money is like, that is as if it's, um, it's as if it's their pocket money, their recharge card money. Mm -hmm. constituency, constituency allowances are almost like 200% of their own salary. They go back, they write, um, uh, they write project on paper, go submit and collect this money and pocket it. Mm. I want my community to know that these people they have been voting for, there's actually something that they're supposed to be returning to them. And I am going to start returning the constituency rights to them. The project that are made for the constituency will start, will start executing them. Yeah. So that it, it, it doesn't appear as say, yes, in four years or four years in, this person goes in, eats a lot of money when you have small issue, you have school fees issue, you go to his gate, you knock and knock and knock and beg. These are the things they are supposed to do. You are not supposed to go there and beg. If you make the atmosphere of somebody's life easy, would the person be going there to beg you? No. It's, the person will not no. come to beg you. will be okay. Yes. A scholarship is given to my children. Why would I go to you and tell you, please help me with school fees for my child when a scholarship exactly. is given to that child? Exactly. So that is why my wishes for my constituency is for them to benefit the dividends of this democracy in Makudi South. Thank you, Faith. Yeah. Oh, this is so beautiful. Ah, so let's check comments. Let's check comments then before we go. <laughs> Let's see if any question is for you or they just uh, pour in you. Yeah. Um, I uh, Juliet, you are a great woman. Faith, that is for you. People are saying <laughs> you're a great woman. See, I told you, really, really great. You are amazing. Yeah. Prince, hey, this one, my area father. Comrade Yasa is a strength to those who are strengthless. Yes, that's for you. That's for you, my dear lady. And Sunny Demi, happy Sunday to everyone on this wonderful program. This is awesome and very educative presentations. Kudos. Thank you, Sonny Demi. Sonny oh, Demi, again, there is ability in disability. Yes. We need to show empathy, care, support, and advocate for people will develop with developmental disabilities because they also have a right to be part of the society. Yes, they are full citizens like us. Nobody escorted yes. anybody to Nigeria. So disability yes. or no disability, they are human being forced. So we have to address them just like we address ourselves. And mind you, everybody has, everybody has one disability or the other. It's mm -hmm. because ours is all, it's physical. Yeah. Ours is physical as everybody can see. And because ours is physical, like my left arm is amputated, I need that support that will help me function well as a person. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's what makes me different. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Good. So we need to be, yeah, we need to show empathy. We don't just yes. rule them away. And disability like this is not contagious. Hey, guys, people, listen. No. She won't give you any hand to cut. She had no. an infection and the circulation was cut off. There was neuropathy and they had to cut their hand, their hand which is really like, I'm sorry for if, if it was treated earlier, this will result. But thank God there is strength in disability. Thank you so much. Yes. Let me see. There's, is there any other new one? Ola yes. Dejo, God will grant your heart desires. Love you. That's yes. for you. That's for Amen. you. God will grant your heart desires. Any other new one? Um, I a well done, Faith, and thank you, Sister Edith, for this program. We admire your strength and resilience. Keep doing good work. We believe in you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank much. you. I think that's both for both of us. 
<laughs> Thank you so much. Any other new one? No. Um, okay, so my comments are just done. Faith, you could see, I'm just rounding up. Faith is an is is an all encompassing. That's what I call you, an all encompassing. Or I could call her an embodiment of strength and vitality. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's not deterred by what the eyes see, but she's moved within her to effect change, a positive yeah. change in the lives of other people. Please let's yeah. emulate Faith. She is a, a wake up call for all of us. If she yeah. can do this with one hand, we that have two hands can do even more. more. She yeah. is a strength in disability. An ability yeah. in disability. Thank you, Faith. Yeah. I am Thank so you. pleased to have you here. I'm pleased to bring you to tell my audience that when you have a disability, it's not the end of the world. Even if you didn't wish for it, but if this is your condition now, you don't stay there, stay there and sob. You don't yeah. become a, a couch potato and start sobbing. You can do something. You can now. You're doing for others, not just you alone. You want people to. You want the voiceless to be heard. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, we're going to let you go. Any new comment? No. Thank you for coming to our show. We're going to let you go now, and I am really grateful. Thank you so really much. Thank you. You do you have any last word for us? We're gonna let yes. you. Know. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, all over the all the viewers uh, watching this program. I want to encourage you. You know, when we are doing this kind of thing, it's not as if along the line we don't get hurt. People, people tend to look at it as it is your responsibility to do what you are doing for them. They don't know because it's a passion. We got insulted. People insult us in spite of trying to help. They still insult you. But what you should do is that don't give up. Charity is something that compassion, passion is from the heart that is coming from. So whether they insult you, whether they discourage you, don't be discouraged. Keep on doing the good work and the Lord will bless you. And that okay. has what has been keeping him going. Thank you so Thank much. You. There's one last word for you. As Sonny yeah. Demi said, my beloved sister Faith, you're doing great. Keep doing what you know how to do best. The Lord is your strength. God bless you. You are a visionary leader. Keep it up. Thank you so much, Sonny. From us to you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Oh, thank you, my audience. Thank you so much. Today we had um, a strength in uh, disability, an ability in disability. A uh, person came here to speak to us, and I hope you also learn from her that we can do more. If she can so close for people with one hand, we can also do, we don't have to so close. There are other ways we can touch people, uh, people's lives. So we want to also continue, emulate faith in one way or the other, feed the hungry, do something, just anything that you can do. Please, it's not about you. The world is not about you alone. There are other people living with you, living around you, who, who is not even doing as much as, uh, let me say one tenth of how much you're doing, like how good you're doing. You may think you're poor, but there are other poorer people who can't even feed. So those are the people that you can touch, touch people's lives, talk for people who can't talk. Thank you, Sister Faith. I am really glad that she came on the show. So today I wanna to digress a little, just um, two, two, five minutes. I wanna digress a little and I crave your indulgence. Uh, because this is very concerning and distressing topic for us. Not me alone, you and I, Nigerians. You and I saw the show of shame called Primaries. Let me play a quick video, small video before I digress. Hold on. My name is Ebuka. I, I really like you. I don't know if you can just give me your number. I will get to call you later, okay? <laughs> Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, please, if it is money, I have money. I have a car, and also have a house. Do you have PVC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get PVC with the Chai woman. If I come green now, which country will go on day? <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah, we may laugh because we think it's a joke, but really, it's not a joke. Like I told you before we went on that quick break, I want to digress a little. It's been very, very uh, disheartening for me. And you and I saw the, the show of shame called primaries of the APC and PDP last week, which was heavily, 
cashed, heavily cashed induced delegate system. You saw that. And it dawned on me that we are headed for yet another doom, eight years of doom in Nigeria. We've, like, this one is not enough. If we take path in what they are doing right now, APC and PDP, we are headed for another doom. I have been boarding with the complaints from people over the past few months that PVCs are useless because our votes do not count. Let me quickly correct that narrative and shock you with this. Our votes do count. Ask me why. Why do politicians heavily pay heavily to talks to disrupt our voting process if our vote don't count? Tell me one question. Second, why do they steal or burn our ballot boxes? Why? Why do they harass or intimidate voters? Some are even killed in the process. If our votes do not count, then why all these hassles? Have you thought about this? That our votes count? That's why it's so important. It is so important to them. That's why they go around, they disrupt our election process. They make sure that they send thugs to steal our ballot boxes, okay? So when they send you as a young man, a young woman to disrupt election or to steal ballot boxes, please tell them to send their children. Their children are over here. Tell them to bring their children and send their children to go burn ballot boxes. You are not a thug. Every four years, they come to you to hire you. Tell them no. Tell them no. You are part of this, the problem if you say yes to them. Nigeria is sinking and we need to rise up to uh we need to rise up to take our place now the leaders are not more nigerians than you and i nobody escorted anybody to nigeria we are all nigerians okay and we deserve to be treated with equal justice why do you keep telling the same why do you keep doing the same thing all over again and expect a change my people this is very uh, this is a very candid question you keep voting these two people and you expect a change. You know, a farmer cannot plant cassava and expect to reap tomato in, 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 uh, in return. You cannot go to the farm, have, you know, plant beans, and then you want to harvest yam. It's not done. It's impossible. Whatever you give to the soil is what you take from the soil. You go to the market, you buy um, uh, momo, which is show boy. You buy show boy and you want to cook your soup with show boy. And at the end of the day, you want, you want this Congo meat to show up. It's not done. There's no miracle there. What you, what you give is what you get. You understand? What you give is what you get. If you put in this, this is what you're going to get. You're doing the same thing the same way every four years, and you want a change. Change will never come like that. Stop asking God to change the country. Stop asking God to do miracles because it ain't coming down because of you. The Bible clearly states that wisdom is profitable to direct. So you have the knowledge, the wisdom to choose between good and bad. See, this is the time now. If you don't apply your sense, see, the one we're there here, if you don't apply it now, you're going to regret again for another four plus four years. Because once they are there, they do everything possible to keep themselves there for two terms. Whether they're doing good or they're doing bad, they want to be there. You understand? So do something now bring your sense into your sense like the wisdom is profitable to direct so follow the wisdom vote out these goons don't blame anyone if anything if you don't follow the, the right senses every four years we are saddled with the choice to make between the devil and the deep blue sea why mm -hmm. a snake has venom each child has venom See, both of them has venom. So now, uh, what are you going to tell me? APC and PDP, both are toxic. They have venom. Do you, you see, they, criss they keep crisscrossing like um, you're playing chairs or draft. What do I call it? Chairs or draft? Draft? Whatever. You, are, you guys know what I mean. Crisscrossing. You know, when you're going with the... Um, with the, the, the draft, you put your game like this. Today, APC member is PDP. Today, PDP member crosses to APC. Uh, tomorrow, they cross. They just keep, keep uh, crisscrossing. And then you think these guys are going to do good for you. They share the same sentiment, okay? I'm going to shock you today with this narrative. They share the same sentiment. Please vote out these goals, okay? How do you expect this analog brain, 
in how do you expect this analog brain to change the country how do these analog brains intend to alleviate mass poverty do they understand the value of life do they understand the value and dignity of, dignity of the lives of their people unprecedented killings and robbery raping kidnapping and the list is never ending is this how to protect lives and property <sighs> Asu has been on strike for the longest time that I can recall. How many of them care enough to ask about Asu? Students are wasting away. These are our young people. Young, oh, you are the leaders of tomorrow. Give me a slack here. You are the leaders of tomorrow, and yet the leaders of tomorrow are, are, are wasting on the street. How are they going to become the leaders of tomorrow? How much is Asu asking about 12 billion? How much did APC and PDP use to buy delegates? Come on now, please use your senses. If they don't care enough about you, how do you not think when they get there, they're going to talk about you? They don't care. You know why they don't ask about us? Do you know why they don't care? Their children are over here schooling. They are all over Europe, America, and Canada schooling. But the children back home schooling are wasting away on the streets, becoming one thing or the other that their nature wouldn't have allowed them to become. They don't care. If nobody's talking about ASU and they're spending so much on delegates right now to buy their way through, then they don't care about you. I'm telling you, use your senses. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. The only, they, they only demanded 12 billion and then delegates cannot bring this money. People are suffering. People are going to bed without food. They don't care. But they have this cash load. They have this dollar ring to spend on delegates so that they'll continue to deepen the country into uh, uh, a minus. They swore an oath to protect their citizens when assuming office. But now, which of the constitution have they fulfilled? Tell me. I have so many questions to ask you today because I told you I was going to digress. I am really burdened with this question. Democracy means a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. That is the meaning of democracy, meaning you are included in decision making. Why are we excluded? APC government is a government of exclusion. We want a government of inclusion. 2023 election is sacrosanct. 2023 election is a make or mark. You either break it now or you keep suffering. We cannot afford to make another mistake with our poor choices. Get up now and get your PVC. Vote for the people you know that know the value of lives and properties. Vote for digital brains that can create wealth and turn our country into the producing one and not just consuming alone. Vote for the government of inclusion. We want to be part of that government. Okay? So because it's a democracy, when you are in power, the power is with you. The power is in your hands right now. The mandate is with you. When you go there to vote, thank God now we are not saddled with just those two people, uh, two parties, APC and PDP. Vote the goons out. We have other parties that have showed up and they are willing to repair the country. Vote for digital brain. We don't need the Akbar that again. They have nothing up here. The only thing they do is to loot. I am not just talking. I'm talking from experience. We are seeing what the, the we have seen what Nigeria is becoming is a skeleton of itself it's plummeting and the more you vote wrong leaders the more they buy delegates the more they buy their way through the more you suffer the more your future is taken from you their father already or their father already ruled our fathers they are ruling us right now and their children are coming back to rule our children now when is it going to be your time you and I when is it going to ever be your time? So vote, vote, vote. Collect your PVC and vote. We want a government of inclusion. On your marks, get set. Ready to vote. Don't just collect your PVC. I want you to make it a point of the, uh, 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 you know, you have to make it real deal this time. Collect your PVC and vote. No matter the money they give you, please vote. We have been disenfranchised. We living here in the diaspora have been disenfranchised from our rights. We cannot vote because they know that we know the difference. No amount of dollar will buy me today and say I should vote for analog brain. I'm not voting because I see that you can't do anything for the country. So because they know our worth, 
they exclude us totally from voting. So you at home, you are our voices right now. We want you guys to do the right thing. No amount of money, even if you take the money, I'm not here to say don't take the money. It's our money anyways. Even if you take the money, vote them out. APC and PDP, they don't deserve to come back and ruin our country into more rooms. Thank you for listening to me today. Thank you so much. Thank you. I am going to leave now. I have told you the lessons of life. Please take this lesson and keep sensitizing our people around. It's going to be that important. Without vote, no sex. Without vote, money not there for the woman to go market again. Ma, not give your wife money to go market. Woman, not grieve for your husband for bed. No sex, no more if you don't go and get your PVC and be ready to vote. Let me see if I have any other new comment. Thank you for listening to me. It's a burden in my heart. Naomi Momo, please get your PVC. Enough is enough of bad governance. Yes, because we don't have the dividends of democracy. In Nigeria, it's just the name, democracy. But there is nothing that relates to democracy. They can protect our lives. They can protect anything. Uh, the lives and the properties of people are in shambles. And then they want us to vote them again. And they are buying those evil delegates. And it doesn't make sense to me. Naomi, get your PVC and sensitize your community, OK? Freeborn Belisima, my able, wonderful mommy. Good evening. I'm happy, ma. Happy Sunday. Nice job. Thank you so much, Belisima. I want you to also speak for your people at home. Please tell them to get their PVCs and not just getting their PVC. There's a step ahead of it. They have to vote when the time comes. They have to be ready to vote out these people. If not, if I yet. <laughs> Any other new, new comment? Sonny Demi, no PVC, no feeding money. Yes, from husband. The same with the wife. No touching. Yes, yes. No PVC, no sex. You can't get it if you don't take your PVC. Any other new one? Maki Rabo. Hey, thank you. Thank you for your effort. Thank you so much, Mark. Mark, you live in Germany, right? Keep sensitizing. This word has to go around. Even to our grandmama, grandpapa, anyone that is eligible to vote, you are 18 years, you have no excuse. You don't want to disenfranchise yourself. You are 18 years of age. You are eligible to vote. You have you have no excuse. You are a Nigerian. These leaders that are cheating us daily for eight years, every eight years, they are not Nigerians more than us. Nobody has called anybody to Nigeria. We are all Nigerians. We need to be treated equally. Enough of the shenanigans. Enough. Enough. Sonny Demi, collect your PVC. Vote out this corrupt, greedy, corrupt old recycle the retired politicians yes they should be the other statesmen now we don't need them anymore because the country is not moving forward please change hand let power change hand okay thank you so much thank you for listening to this program we are into 43 minutes of our program now um thank you for listening to me please please keep sensitizing this is the same way if you live in abroad and your family is not getting their pvc don't send money to them Tell them to show you their PVC. And on that day, they have to also video themselves voting. If not, then, then she buy, they're not going to get. Now me Not send them. She buy, make them go collect PVC and make them vote. Mama, papa, brother, sister, now they hear me. Made them go vote. Thank you so much. I have to leave now. This is the end of the show. Uh, <laughs> thank you for listening to me. I miss you all already. Uh, next week is another exciting one. Until I come your way. I want you to do good. Collect your PVC and be ready to vote out all these retired there. We want to retire them. They should go home. Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay well and stay good. Do good to other people. Bye. Ciao, ciao.